discuss microservices patterns with Spring Boot. How can I hide, hide this? Okay, so what we will discuss today. First of all, uh, we will uh, refresh your knowledge about microservice architecture patterns. So what advantages we have here. Uh, next, we will discuss why it's problem with microservices. So what we need to like solve when we have microservices architecture. Then I'll give you a quick overview of um, all patterns we have for microservices and I have chosen for you three interesting patterns. It's a circuit breaker, a gateway, and health check. So we will discuss each of them, and I will also demonstrate you how they work with Spring Boot. And then we will make some conclusions about all this topic. So let's start. So I know everyone knows about microservices architecture pattern. So it's very popular nowadays in Java world and at all in the IT world. So it's an approach to developing a single application as a suite of small services, each running in its own process and communicating with lightweight mechanism. As far as you know, we have two types of communication in microservices, synchronous and asynchronous. So in the synchronous, we use such mechanism as HTTP and asynchronous, we use message broker, for example, Kafka, RabbitMQ and other stuff. So this approach is increasingly being used over the monolithic approach as it has many advantages. It gives us more scalability and, and also independent development and deployment and better fault isolation. Why scalability is so important? So when we have monolithic application, we can use only vertical scalability so only increase the power of our machine increase cpu for example but when we have microservices we can increase number of machines increase number of instances and also it gives us flexible customization of it because for example if we see that some service is highly loaded we can increase uh, instances of it also independent development and deployment. So each microservice can use its own language, its own technology and its own versions. And also it can be deployed separately. So it's also very useful. And better fault isolation. So we, if we have some error, it's located only in one service. So we can just like redeploy it, fix it separately. And also separate teams can work on different microservices. So everything is okay with microservices, they are so awesome. So what's the problem? With all the benefits, the microservices approach has a set of challenges. They are not the problems, they are challenges because of its complexity. So first challenge is design. Also we have challenge with communication between services, with testing and debugging with security, with fault tolerance, and with data managers. So we have many questions here. How will we decompose a system into different microservices? How will we use communication mechanism between them? How will we test it? Because for example, if you have some integration test in one microservice, we need to mock other microservices and also understand how to do it. So we need to understand whole instruction infrastructure and we have some problems if we have some i don't know different languages maybe or different technologies security is also a challenge because data can be distributed between microservices it, but we need to make it like in one place for some user data fault tolerance is also a problem and data management because we, we can use one database, we can use different databases. So there are many questions when we have microservice architecture. So how to optimize services communication? How will be microservice size? So it will be small or not? It's also a tricky question. <laughs> also, we need to understand best frameworks to integrate services for our purposes, for, for our requirements. How to maintain fidelity, integrity, and privacy of user data when it's distributed. Also about bounded context. It's also like very difficult question, optimal boundaries and connection points between each microservice. 
and also how to prevent failure of entire application if the event of the individual service downtime. So the question for all these challenges are patterns. So um, we have some common problems for microservices, some scopes of problems, and for each scope we have some like group of patterns we can use to solve our problems. So there is why it's so important to understand all these patterns or even know about them. So we have decomposition patterns. So we can decompose our microservices by capability, by subdomain, or maybe by transaction. We have integration patterns as proxy aggregator chain microservices. We have patterns for data management. So it will be one database per service or maybe shared database per service. And also we can use SecureS and Saga patterns. We have some patterns for observability. So for ag aggregation logs, for example, so we can aggregate all logs for our all microservices in one place. We can use metrics, health checks, and also we have cross-cutting concern patterns like service discovery, circuit breaker, blue-green deployment. So is it clear so far, guys? Maybe any questions? Clear. Okay, let's move on. So, as I said, I choose three patterns for you. They're very interesting. First is circuit breaker, second is AP gateway and health checks. And also here I listed which technologies. So one technology actually is Spring, but what implementation is Spring can be used for this pattern. So for circuit breaker, we have actually the Spring Cloud Circuit Breaker with several implementations. It's Netflix Hystrix, Resilience 4G, Sentinel, and Spring Retry. For API Gateway, we have Spring Cloud Gateway. So it's easy to write predicates and filters. Here we also have Circuit Breaker integration in it, and also Spring Cloud Discovery Client integration. We can use rate limiting, pass rewriting, and also Spring Cloud Gateways uses some mechanism from reactive programming from uh, WebFlux. And also I choose health check API pattern uh, and we can use Spring Boot Activator. So Spring Boot Activator gives us many opportunities. Uh, it's health check API logging, metrics, auditing, monitoring. It also has integration with Prometheus, with Grafana. So it's very useful also to understand like health of your application and to get some metrics of it. So we will discuss each pattern from this list and also I will demonstrate to you some code I prepared. So let's start with circuit breaker. So imagine we have three microservices, for example, two and they all communicating with each other using HTTP or maybe HTTPS. So first microservice calls second microservice, second microservice calls third microservice. But something went wrong with third microservice. It returns failure or maybe timeout. And then when we have very bad, very long timeout, it's like we can use this microservice because it's very long too processes the information. So in this situation, we see that this error is cascading to second microservice and to first microservice, and they like idling. So the problem here is how to prevent a network or service failure from cascading to other services and how to not exhaust thread pools. And also, of course, this microservice can be not a Ours microservice, it can be some third party library, maybe some third party system, maybe some service from your account. So some, some system, some downstream system. So, and to solve this problem, we have pattern circuit breaker. So let's see how it works. I have some, something in chat, okay. Let's move on. So 
imagine we have two microservices or maybe some downstream system as i mentioned so in this service we have some calling code and we have a wrapper called circuit breaker so calling code doesn't call uh microservice it calls circuit breaker which calls downstream system so in this situation everything is okay so downstream system is healthy circuit breaker just uh, gets the response and give it to calling code in this case we have circuit breaker closed state but something went wrong with microservice too it failed we have some timeouts of error or errors so in this case, as you can see, circuit breaker has a threshold for errors. So some count of errors we can uh, get until we move to another state. So a number of failures is increased. So in this situation, for example, if we have some issue, some exception, it will be returned to the calling code. For example, failing system, some, something went wrong, so it will be returned. But when number of failures exceeded, there is no more communication between circuit breaker and failing system because we try not to get this information because we understand that there will be an error when we try to call it. So in this case, circuit breaker doesn't return an exception from the say, failing system. It returns shortly fallback exception some constants for example i don't know circuit breaker don't call failing system for now let's wait something else so in this case circuit breaker is in open state and also we have some reset timeout so for example in 10 seconds we will try to understand if microservice 2 is good or not so when reset timeout exceeded circuit breaker try to see is it okay to reset with recovered system. Was it recovered or not? And it's called half open state. And if system was recovered, then we go back to the closed state and system will work. So qu any questions before we get, before we move to the demonstration, how circuit breaker works? Okay, I hope it's clear for you. So let's take a look at, at code then. So I choose resilience for J implementation because I think it's more interesting <laughs> because Hystrix has not much like configurations for circuit. It's been deprecated actually <laughs> so yeah and also in my project we use resilience for j also because wait, i didn't know it was deprecated but thank you <laughs> for this information okay so let's take a look first of all of configuration so before we take a look at this configuration i want to show you the documentation of resilience for j to understand all this configuration. So first of all, we have failure rate threshold. So it configures in the percentage, the failure rate. So for example, if we have failure rate threshold 50 in this situation, uh, if we have half of requests failed, in this case, we move to another state. Slow call rate threshold, it's for slow, uh, request and we don't use it in uh, our demonstration today because we have some permitted calls max max weight duration in half open state so how will circuit breaker wait the most important i think here is sliding window type so we have two window types for a circuit breaker so it can be count based and it can be time base. So for example, let me show you here are my presentation for so so let's imagine our service uh, gets um, uh, calls four times, for example, 
Yeah, so, and we will count all these four requests. Or we can count some timeout. So if sliding windows is count based, the last, for example, four calls are recorded and aggregated. If the sliding window is time based, the calls of last, for example, four seconds recorded and aggregated. So just like customization, what we use count of request or some time of request. Is it clear, guys, for you? Yeah. Okay, so also we have configuration for the size of this slide in video. So in case of count base, actually in my demonstration, we will use count base. So for example, we will have four, it will be four requests. So we have minimum number of calls, pay duration in open state, some record exception. So it's a list of exceptions we record as a failure. And we can also ignore some exceptions. So for example, our system returns some exception and we need to understand, uh, is it okay to get it like a exception or it's not an exception actually. Health also some predicates for failures. And yep, I think that's it. Let's take a look at my configuration here. So here are configurations. So sliding window is count base, failure rate threshold is 50. So that it means that if 50% request fails, we move to open state. Wait duration will be five seconds. Sliding window size four. So count of requests we consider in closed state is four. Here we have circuit breaker registry. So it's like a factor for circuit breakers. And we create bean demo circuit breaker. Okay, here we have some demo service. So we have a flag for errors. So here we have a predicate, I mean supplier. And if our error flux is true, we will throw some runtime exception. Oops, service does not work. And if, if not, we just return this method, get. And get method just returns some good message, some everything is okay. And we have also methods for disable errors and enable errors. We need this to demonstrate how circuit breaker works. It also created delay, but we will not use it. In controller, we have different endpoints. So we have endpoints to get it without circuit breaker, to disable errors, to enable errors, Forgetting circuit breaker state. So here we have name, state, metrics, timestamp, text, and configuration. And this is the most interesting method we have here. So this is get with circuit breaker. So first of all, we need to decorate our supplier. So our supplier, as you remember, throws half on errors if we, the flag of errors is true. We decorate it with circuit breaker with some fallback. Also here we have some options to also decorate our supply with the drive, with rate limiter and with thread pull bulk head. Then we have also some recovering and we return a result of our supplier. So let's start the application and and see how everything works. Okay, let's go to Postman. Where is my collections? Wait a minute. Okay. 
let's take a look at circuit breaker state for now. So as you can see, everything is zero. So we have no calls for now. And also we have failure rate is minus one. State is closed. Here we have some configuration of circuit breaker. So time stamp is na uh, nanoseconds, for example, sliding windows is count based. So everything we configured is here. And also have some text. Okay, so let's make some call. Everything is okay. Okay, so as you can see, state of circuit breaker changed. So we have number of successful called equals to one and no buffered one and failure rate doesn't change. So let's try another calls. So as you can see number of successful call is free. Let's try once again and once again. It's four. And if we continue to try setting, it still will be four because our sliding window is four. Okay, let's enable errors. Oops, we have an error. Number of successful calls changed to three. Failure rate is 25. State is still closed. Sorry. Still error. Failure rate is 50. Number of fail calls, two. And we have open state. half open, so we try to understand if system was recovered or not. Still half open. Half open. Okay, so here it is. We have an error of uh, circuit breaker is open and does not permit further call. So in this case, circuit breaker doesn't call uh, actually the information and get the error. It's just shortly give us fallback message. So why it's uh, getting us now this error, but not circuit breaker because the sliding window, I mean, uh, um, not the sliding window, let me show you here. Here in configuration, we have duration only five seconds. It's not very much. So that's, that's the reason why we get in this error, but not circuit breaker error. Five seconds exceeded. So, any questions, guys? Here, what call problems can be solved except uh, many useless calls by circuit breaker? Maybe some rollback issues or, or something like that. Mm. Let me think. Well, the, the problem. So just save us for useless uh, yeah, microservices. Yeah, it's work. like yeah, it's like an alternative to Spring retry. So instead of just retry, and we give some numbers, so we have give some configuration how we we will retry to 
see if system was recovered or not. So for example, in my project, we use it, uh, we know we have some external API and uh, we know it's very often like doesn't work. And uh, instead of uh, exhausting our thread pools and uh, just wait in or something, we return some short answer instead, some fallback. But about rollback, uh, well, no, I think it's used only for like, <laughs> such systems that can work. And, and what do you do for, for rollbacks, for example? For you rollbacks, use something? Um, yeah, for um, example, you have the service number five failed, but uh, because of bad design, uh, you saved some data on service number three, you know, and now you need to roll back. Uh, yeah, or you don't have yeah, such yeah. I leaks. get your point, but I think it's not circuit breaker purposes. So it's like some transaction management. So some some other parts of these transactions. And then okay. my project, Thank I'm you. not sure we, I don't, I think we use something, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, circuit breaking can be integrated with some some rollbacking patterns. I think it will be interesting approach. This is more about saga pattern, I think. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, maybe some other questions here uh, with these endpoints, with the states. I wouldn't write it to the spring because the hysterix was integrated previously. For example, this annotation uh, rollback uh, circuit breaker and so on. Do not write all this boilerplate about the <laughs> sorry about the builder and so on. Uh, but I don't use hysterix. <laughs> yeah, but oh. I, I think it can be integrated with hysterix. Yeah, maybe. So basically, spring cloud. Circuit breaker does have a lot of the annotations that does decorate your method with all these boilerplate plays that you wrote about the decoration of the calling method and so on. It just out the box does the result for J integrated in Spring as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. I think we can move to another two patterns. So let's take a look at them. Mm. Okay, so next pattern is API gateway pattern. So let's imagine we have many clients, for example, the normal buy clients or web client, and uh, there are many calls to microservices, synchronous and asynchronous. So we have so many communication. It's not like uh, looks like <laughs> something useful. So in this case, so the problem will be how do the clients of microservice based application access the individual services. So we need some better approach to access our services from our clients. And solution here is an IP gateway. It will be an additional layer that sits between the client and the server acting as a reverse proxy routing request from the client to the server. And it's similar to the facade from object oriented design and it provides a single entry point to the APIs encapsulating the underlying system architecture, which is called API Gateway, as we mentioned. So it will be look like, let me show you a diagram. So imagine we have three clients, mobile client, web client, and third party application client. We have some facade for all of them, some API Gateway, which will decide, which will route the calls to the microservices. Also, we can use load balancing also with API Gateway. If we're talking about Spring, here's the diagram also for it. So, for example, we have some Spring Cloud Gateway. Here we have some routing handlers with predicates and with filters. So, for example, we can filter by host, we can filter by 
pass. We can also use uh, some pass rewriting and other stuff. And rewrite it to like relocate it to our microservices. So let's take a look how it works. I also prepared some demo for you. So let's take a look. It's only one class here. So here we have some uh, mapping just to for history fallback. And here we have bean relocator, root, re, root locator. So here we specify the identifier of the root. Also we specify a lambda. So for example, in this case, if we ha have pass get, we will relocate it to HTTP bean org. In this situation, if we have host my host org, for example, we will also re relocate it to HTTP bean org. Here we are writing. So if we're trying to get some foo, for example, get, we will rewrite this path by get. And also host will must be rewrite. Here's the history example. So if we have some filter, we can create like his hystrix. As you can see, some configuration of hystrix and also change a route to HTTP bin org. This is a fallback. So here we not only specify a history configuration by name, we also specify fallback URI. We, we have here. Also, we can use limit routing. So we can use request rate limiter. Here we have Redis rate limiter. I have uh, Redis running on some port. And also we can use WebSocket route. So here we will locate to another and to the sockets. Okay, so we also have some tests here to demonstrate how it works and also I prepared endpoint calls in Postman. Let me first of all start with tests because I cannot demonstrate actually how uh, rate limiting works without tests. So here is rate limiting. So we're trying to get to call our endpoint many times. And we will have an exception. There is too many calls. One second and you will see it. Here it is, too many requests. Okay, let's take a look at in postman calls. So for example, let's start with pass routing. So as you saw, we have no such endpoint in our, our application actually. So we have only gateway here configuration. Configuration that C as you can see, if we have get, we will relocate it to HTTP bin org. So let's see how it works. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Another stuff. Um, password. I need to stop my second application. Yes. And run this one. Let's start it. Okay, application has started. 
let's take a look at endpoints. Pass route, for example. So we have information from HTTP and work. Let's try something else, for example, rewriting. So we're trying to get full get. And we also get HTTP bone org because our path was rewrited. And also the host, as you can see, is rewrite org. So if we disable it, we will have not found. Also, let me demonstrate you Hystrix fallback. This is a fallback. So host is Hystrix fallback org here. So here, as you can see, let me try the delay. Cannot, cannot see it. Okay, so any questions, guys, on API Gateway? <laughs> Just the truth, Epic Gateway is something new to me, so I have never seen it uh, like being used on some project, but I was interested in how it works, so I prepared some information about this for you. Uh, could you please give uh, some examples, maybe, of uh, this pattern, uh, where, where we can use uh, this pattern, for, for which cases? Mm. Well, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we can use it when we have uh, many clients and, for example, they use, I don't know, some endpoints you can change and you want to relocate them. So, for example, uh, I don't know, we have many microservices and we have some uh, mobile client and it calls uh, something like, uh, I don't know, mobile, please. So some something, and we can just uh, not create such a point. We can just uh, use one service this, with this uh, API gateway, and it will relocate to the service we need. And for example, if something change and we don't want to change the route, we can. But in in our application, we can change API gateway. So, because for example, uh, we have some third party client with mo mobile and uh, we just give them some one, one route and on our side, we decide what we, will, what we will do with this route. And also, as far as I know, we can use uh, this with um, load balancing also. So for example, we have several instances of something, but we have one root and we can load balance here. So it's how I understand this. Thank you. It's clear for me. Yeah. And also, yeah, we have some filters here. We have some, some, some additional options. Um, so, uh, Anna, is it possible to uh, inject uh, those URIs dynamically. I mean, if you're discovery, I mean, uh, the API gateway service is registered on some kind of discovery service. Is it possible to get those URIs dynamically? I mean, inject. Mm, I'm not sure about that, but we have some like filters. So like red, red regex pattern, for example, but dynamically I can say. It seems to me like, well, I need to investigate it. You can always get this from some another services because it's just a value, you know? Mm, yeah, but I, I don't think know, about, like Life I Darkly or something like that, if, if you want. 
it's like yeah but example. it's being it's uh, this locators build builder locator hmm. oh you mean after builder okay yeah probably. yeah it's i mean possible. for example this route for example we have this here we have get and can we change it dynamically or not here mm -hmm. but you can use external implementation for example amazon ip gateway and configure it in amazon cons console yeah sure sure we can i'm just showing you a like spring <laughs> spring implementation okay uh let's move on then uh to our last pattern and it's <laughs> the most easy i think in my presentation is the easiest okay it's a health check api okay so sometimes a service instance can be incapable of handling requests yet still be running so for example some cases we have some resources we need for example database and if something is data with database so the service is not healthy so how to understand a service is healthy or not healthy how to detect that the running service instance is a unable to handle requests so for this purposes we have such pattern as health check api so this is just an endpoint that returns a health of a service and we have some handler here that will decide for example some conditions why service is uh, healthy or unhealthy for example disk space or maybe some database connection or maybe some kafka topic so it depends so and in spring we have actually very good integration as spring boot actuators so let's take a look how it works let's stop our get pay application and move to spring boot actuator so here we have an application we have configuration <clears throat> this is only just for security nothing interesting here we have some controller with some endpoints and here we have health api so it just returned random boolean is true or false and we can implement um abstract health indicator override in method do health check and here we can uh, just decide if our application is healthy or not healthy so here we are, we're just using an endpoint that returns true or false randomly and in this situation we use just uh, everything is okay and here is down so let's take a look at the endpoint. One second, it's loading. Actuator. So actuator gives us many different things like issues, like health, to other, but we need health. Also, promotels, some metrics. So let's check health of our application. So now it's down. Disk space is up, but system is down because we configured it. It's still down, down. Okay, it's up. It changes randomly. So yeah, it's very simple example, but uh, Spring Boot Actuator is very good thing to use uh, because, for example, if we have a big amount of microservices, we can use this health API endpoint of each of them to understand how it works. 
is it okay or not? And also it can be useful for users, for example. Um, so that's it. Um, any questions on health API? I think it's very simple. <laughs> Do you use the Spring Actuator in your projects? I used in my pet project. <laughs> it's very <laughs> helpful for me. Well, the thing is that uh, it can be very simply added to your application, but you get so many advantages like metrics, like some logs or some health API, and it's not a big deal, I think. Okay. So... Hey, Anna, Anna, I have <laughs> also a question. Uh, look, for instance, uh, we have a service that works with some database mm -hmm. and uh, this service will be useless for us without database connection. And should we take into account uh, in health check uh, connection with database? For instance, uh, the service is healthy, but uh, database is down and uh, it is unable to connect it. Well, it depends on your requirements. If uh, you s assume that service is uh, can handle requests, so all requests will be like nothing. So then uh, you, you return that system is down. But uh, if it's just like uh, some part of uh, and uh, some endpoints can work, so then it, you can like configure it flexible. It's my opinion. Okay, it depends. I got it. Yeah, it depends. It depends on on purposes, because uh, other systems they maybe don't understand what you do. They don't know what database you use or what you need. It doesn't matter. They just need to understand: Are you okay or not? So one question. <laughs> yes, yeah, thanks. That answers my question. Okay. So. That's it for today. Let's make some conclusions. So why do we need patterns actually? Patterns designed to solve microservice architecture challenges, some common challenges. And we have different groups of patterns for different scopes of problems. For example, reliability, security, observability, data management, decomposition, deployment, testing. And it will help you to find the best pattern for your problem. So today we, we discussed three patterns for different problems. So I don't know your project needs them or not, but maybe when you know about these patterns, you see like, hmm, we can use something interesting pattern here to solve our problem. So, and of course, uh, on uh, uh, step when you design microservices, you, when you already understand your requirements, you can prevent common microservices problems uh, if you like integrate these patterns from the beginning. I don't know, these patterns and maybe some other patterns. So for example, uh, on my project, uh, we uh, in integrate circuit breaker and for example, uh, I didn't know about this pattern. We have a problem and one guy said just, we have some pattern here for this problem. We can use Spring and the problem was solved. And uh, if we return to this schema, all these patterns can be useful for you. So for example, we also use blue-green deployment. We, we try to use blue-green deployment. And I can say that circuit breaker maybe can be easily integrated into existing application. But if we're talking about blue-green, it's not as easy because it can be easy integrated from the beginning when we understand that our whole system will use blue-green in the future. And this observability patterns also can be easily integrated into existing application. But for example, this pattern, of course not, because if you decompose patterns by, <laughs> I don't know, something wrong, so it's very difficult to fix it when application is in production and it works. Um, and database patterns also can be like, it's difficult. So 
I think it's very important to understand the patterns or even just not understand, understand the groups, understand the common problems and to design the better microservices system. Also here in presentation, uh, I provided some links if you're interested to get some details after our talk, some plural site course. Uh, well, I think it's not, not a bad course. Maybe <laughs> you know better, but I, I like it. Also very good site, microservices IO. I think you know about this one. Some documentation for residents for J. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, if you have some questions, I can try to answer. <laughs>